So I'm a huge fan of Crystrons if you didn't know, and right now the best way to play it is by running a Territory of the Sharks build with Mud Dragon slapped into the extra deck. So now after playing around with it for a while, I really just wanted to share what Mud Dragon brings to the table, and also how it helps versus the meta uh, as we go into the September KC Cup. So Mud Dragon is a level 4 water attribute, worm type fusion monster, who requires two monsters with the same attribute but different types. That water attribute is actually incredibly important because that's what allows you to play Territory of the Sharks with it. And the two fusion materials are pretty easy to get in a Crystron deck since you're running Mermels anyway. But that's only half the reason why it's such a good add to uh, Crystrons. The first half of its effect reads, your opponent cannot target this card or monsters on the field with the same attribute as this card. So since he's water, and because everything else in our deck is water as well, uh, it essentially means that all our monsters are untargetable. So let's go down the list and see what that means as we come into the KC Cup. If we're looking just at the meta, uh, we'll find that uh, Onomats, Harpies, Resonators, Gaia, and the newer Survival Zen TG builds all rely on some form of targeting removal. Especially against Harpies, because they rely hugely on Cyber Slash to remove a lot of their threats, along with targeting spells like Book of Moon, uh, Chalice, stuff like that. I think honestly Mud Dragon's pretty much an auto win against Harpies. Onomat's uh, definitely going to be rampant this KC Cup, and he does help against uh, M7 and Gagaga Bolt, and then Crystrons can survive two of their turns long enough anyways uh, to slap back afterwards. Kai as well actually needs to target for pretty much all of their plays, but you're also on a bit of an awkward footing with them, because you can't really attack over Kai itself. At least with my builds, uh, I don't really have anything over 2600 attack, besides Spider Shark and Quarion. And even then, you can't use Spider Shark under their field. And TD right now runs a ton of targeting traps, so there's that as well. So, with the less meta decks I can think of, we'll find Water Exes, uh, Photons, Gimmick Puppets, Yosenju. Uh, Blackwings, if anyone plays them, and pretty much any deck that runs the uh, targeting trap trio, uh, they all pretty much require targeting for a lot of their disruptive plays. One of the newer cards in Gorgonic Guardian also targets. Uh, you'll probably be seeing it played in Magnet Warrior decks or just straight up dedicated Gorgonic Guardian decks. Notably, uh, Mud Dragon doesn't really do much against Cyber Dragons and Thunder Dragons. So uh, good luck with those matchups is all I can say really. Um, I think Cyber Dragons are actually a really good matchup. Crystrons can generally survive the first turn and then outgrind them usually as long as you can outplay their overflow. Thunderers, maybe not. They're probably my least favourite matchup right now. Really hoping to get good by the ban list. There's just not really much you can do against the Levionir and then they have so many special summons afterwards. And they have Bouncer as well. Uh, I guess if anyone has, has any tips on that matchup, uh, just put them in the comments for us. Another common thing that you might see, uh, being usually run by Blue Eyes, is Ultimate Providence and Divine Wrath. For those, you really just have to bait out stupid players with something in the grave, usually. Uh, smart players usually don't fall for it though. But how many smart Blue Eyes players are there anyway? So what you might need a bit of experience using is Mud Dragon's second effect, which reads, once per turn, as a quick effect, you can declare one attribute, this card becomes that attribute until the end of this turn. So what that means is you can stop your opponent from targeting their own monsters as well if you declare that attribute, which can actually stop the opening plays of a couple decks. The most well-known one so far is probably Blue Eyes Sage, who needs to target to activate his effect. So that's pretty huge. I've got a couple more examples, uh, maybe less meta, not saying that Blue Eyes is meta or anything. Gimmick Puppet Destroy, uh, the monster they summon with their skill. Uh, he requires targeting to get his effect off, but since he grabs it off a skill, you need to preemptively switch attribute uh, and then toggle on before he skills up. So pretty much when I see a 
Quattro. I'll toggle on immediately when I have a Mew Dragon on field. I just called a Mew Dragon, thanks DK. Another example you might often see is Mask Change. Uh, that's a quick play spell though. So it's a lot trickier to play around because uh, he can change your attribute switch. So that's something you'll have to play around. Uh, a bit more niche here, you can straight up stop any decks that need to play equips. Stuff like Noble Knights and Evil Eye. All you have to do is chain your attribute switch uh, once you see the summon and you'll be good to go. Just a quick note that it won't help with things that target monsters in the graveyard. So stuff like Living Fossil or Autonomous Action Unit. I don't know why that's popular. Uh, Karakuri Gamma Oil as well. Another really niche one, I've only seen one in like the past year, is Fortune Lady Past. She needs to target Fortune Lady Light to get their play started. And that's all I can think of so far. So if you've got any more interesting interactions, uh, post them in the comments. So now we know what to look out for, uh, let's have a look at what a general opening play looks like. So we're against Blue Eyes, and we do not get the best hand. We're kind of hoping for a Mermail or a Clistron in our hand, so we can uh, poly, poly away a Thistfern or something. We do find the Abyssius, uh, and then we grab our Pike. Pike manages to get Thistfern into our hand, and then we can poly away the Thistfern. So we can grab our Sulfefnir. And since we have Launcher in the grave, we can summon uh, Hope Woven with Territory of the Sharks. And that usually means, effectively, that we have a 2900 attack Mud Dragon, which is pretty hard to out usually. And if you notice at the beginning of turn 3, I switch Mud Dragon to Light, so he can't use Sage if he does have it. Unfortunately, that means that he can use his Raigeki Break on my. Hope Woven, but he doesn't. He uses it on my back row, which is an impact, which is completely fine. Here I make Mud Dragon and a Citri because I have multiple level 3s in my graveyard to make an Amatrix with. Also, neat thing King of the Swamp does work as a level 3 for Citri as well. So, pretty much the idea is to make a Mud Dragon and then protect it with either uh, Hope Woven or the Amatrix. And generally, along the way, you'll have set up your Sulfefnir in the grave, and maybe even another couple Crystrons that can search. So that's it. Uh, hopefully you've learned something. Uh, this is my first kind of video like this. I uh, hope I did it okay. Um, maybe I'll make another video in like a couple months, who knows. <laughs>